Hi and welcome to the channel. Now today I've got a Pioneer A10 amplifier in front of me. I think it's about 40 watts a channel into 8 ohms. And what I'm going to do is check to see what the uh, DC bias is now. And uh, if it needs adjusting, I'm going to adjust it as well. So I'm going to show you a few points on the amplifier. I'll be using my little screwdriver with, not the correct screwdriver, uh, but I'll be using that one anyway uh, to do the adjustment. But we're going to check what it is, first of all anyway, as I got it, just, you know, see how far it went out. Because uh, I did do a Marantz a little while ago, PM5005, and the uh, DC uh, bias was uh, over double what it should have been on both channels, I think, or definitely on one. Uh, that's for certain. So I've got my meter here set up. We're going to put that on DC millivolts shortly, and this is unplugged at the moment. So here's the adjustment. We're going to do the right channel first. Here's the adjustment for the right channel if I need to adjust it. And the test points down here, this little socket here. There is a couple of ways that uh, you can uh, connect that up to your meter. The one way would be just to put the probes, pretend this is a probe, and put it in there and try to clip it on there and wedge it in there. Look, which I did with the Marantz. That seemed to work. It's a little bit more awkward. I ain't got so much of a a bit to kind of wedge it in with it, it seems to fall out a lot and I don't want it, they're very close to each other so I don't want it to fall out and short each other out especially when I've got the amplifier on and cause any damage so uh, what I've come up with here is uh, some little clips that uh, you kind of get if I just bring them into focus here there's the pair of them there these are kind of like jumper clips leads not so much clips, jumper leads you get with little project boards and that and uh, they're very small hopefully you can see that down the lens very small connectors there. So what I've done is I actually took one of these and split it into two. So I've got two. And I'm going to put my crocodile leads on it and connect my crocodile leads to my meter. So uh, here we go. You'll see me do this live. So there's my little connection. i push my first one in there. Make sure this crocodile clip don't touch anything else in the amplifier. And the other end of it is, is going to my meter. And also making sure that ain't shorting out anywhere as well. So that's one lead. We're going to get the other lead in. And plug it in next to it it's a bit tricky but hopefully you can see what i'm doing so that's both leads plugged in comes in handy because now you've got some freedoms you've got some movement i mean if you can do it yourself holding both tests you know both uh, test meter leads onto that particular unit be very very careful you don't short it out but the thing is we want to have this amplifier on for about 10 minutes to see how much it changes uh, over that period of time your hands are going to start aching so if you can get something like this this is this is ideal really it comes in handy so make sure the other end of the leads are not touching each other. They're not touching. And uh, what we're going to do now is plug it in and turn it on. But first of all, we're going to make sure we put this on milliamps. I've got it on 200 milliamps there. That should be fine. Don't put it on resistance or anything like that, because that will cause problems. I've got the mains here at the back, so we're going to plug that in now. And you've got to be extra careful, because we've got some mains going in this unit now, uh, especially in this area. Uh, that's where the mains, it does uh, whittle its way down to a lesser voltage as we go on through the amplifier but um, yeah, I still want to be careful I've got my little adjustment tool here if I need it so uh, as you can see it's on zero milliamps now but we're going to turn it on just see the initial what it is got it on the auxiliary at the moment got the uh, controls to uh, the middle setting you know, bass treble etc is all in the middle setting and the volume down so if we turn it on as you can see we're coming up to 6.8 uh, this, you know, like I say, you should leave it on about 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it off in a minute, uh, the recording, but leave the amplifier on, because I don't expect you to hang around here 10 minutes. But so I'm going to leave it on, and then you come back and see what it is in 10 minutes. But what we're looking at is uh, it's, it's a minus, because I've got the leads the wrong way around, it's a minus. If you had the leads the other way around, it would be a plus. Well, that seems to be fluctuating quite a bit there, as you can see. A little bit of fluctuation, just wondering if uh, I've got my contacts here nice and tight. Uh, they should be. But we don't want it fluctuating like that. So I'm going to turn that off. And we're going to make sure we've got a good contact. That don't seem very good contact to me. So I'm going to turn it off for a minute and make sure I've got some good contacts here. It could be just the way I've done these leads. I should have put a bit of solder on these maybe to get a better contact. But let's just try that. Let's make sure we've got a good contact there. A good contact at the other end of my meter, which I have. And make sure these are in nice and tight as well. Then we'll turn it back on. So let's make sure these two don't short out. They're near each other, but they're not shorting, so we're safe. So we're going to plug it back in. So if things do go wrong, as I do it here live, you're with me live. We're going to push the power supply back in. And hopefully this time, 
that meter is going to stay a bit more constant. There you go. It did start off at about 6 points eight before, so this looks more realistic. And I'm not too sure why it deviated. It must be just a loose contact there on my leads. So, uh, yeah, make sure you've got a nice steady reading. So what I'm going to do now is come back in 10 minutes and uh, see what it reads then. Okay, we're 10 minutes in. And as you can see, it's hovering between 8.9 and 8.8. .8. It did creep up to 9. And it's gone back down to 8.9. Um, yes, so we're happy with that. It says plus or minus 2 millivolts, so it can be 6 or 10, optimum being 8. But I'm not going to fiddle around with that little uh, that little uh, pot there. There's the pot there. I'll take a picture where it is to show you. But I could twiddle that to get it to 8, but it's going to be so fine that I'm going to leave that. So what I think we'll do, we'll go over to the other channel and check that one out. Right, got it connected up to the other channel. As you can see, make sure nothing's shorting out before we turn it on. So we'll, we'll turn that on. We're looking for 8, as you know. And we're going to check out how close this is. Uh, this is doing pretty well, I think. Like I say, going with that Marantz I did about a week or so, a couple of weeks ago now. That was miles out, wasn't it? It was, it was over double what it should be. But uh, here, it doesn't look too bad at all. I mean, it's kept within tolerance here. It's done really well, I think. Um, yeah, so what we do, leave that on for 10 minutes and see what reading we get. Okay, we're back after 10 minutes and that's 9.3. It did go to 9.4, it may just go back up to 9.4, but uh, just slightly over the other one, the other one was 8.9. Within the uh, 6 to 10 that it can be. Um, so yeah, it can be, uh, 0.8 is the optimum. Uh, it can be plus or minus 2 millivolts. So what we're going to do is just alter that, just to show you, because I've actually done nothing at the moment, so I'm going to do a little bit of alteration here. It's just to show you, this is where I would twiddle it and uh, see what difference it makes. Just with a very slight turn, and we're old it about there, 8.5, that's a very, I mean, I can get it spot on probably, but that's near enough, we're not a million miles away, that's very, very close, so uh, we're happy with that, um, and uh, yeah, that's it really, um, should, we, should we try it, see if we can get 8 dead, should we give that a go? Go the wrong way there. Seven point nine. It's point one out. Should we go over the other side and get it seven point nine as well, or thereabouts? Yeah, why not? Okay, I left it on ten minutes. Thought might as well come and do this side then. Get it to seven point nine or near enough. So let's have a little twiddle. There you go, match them both, 7.9. So that's very, very close, and we're going to be happy with that. Okay, onto the DC offset. There's no actual uh, pot here we can turn, unlike the Marantz. We had a pot where we could turn to adjust the DC offset. This is pretty much set now uh, after adjusting the bias as well. So we're, we're at minus 8 millivolts. Well, 8.6 was the tops there, I think it went up to. So that's on the right hand channel. So uh, we're happy enough with that. That's well, you know, obviously zero would be absolutely perfect, but. Uh, Anything under 25 is going to be fine, um, even 50 some people say, it's a matter of opinion, uh, me and my friend, we seem to think that uh, you know under 50 is probably going to still be okay, not too much to worry about, but uh, a lot of people like it, uh, obviously on zero, but uh, under, you know, under 25 or 20 is definitely great, so um, that's fine that channel, so what we should do is we'll turn it off and uh, check the other channel out. Right, come over to the left hand channel now, as you can see 5.4 peak there I think. Uh, it's been on for about 10 minutes ago, uh, 10 minutes or so now, um, just to make sure it's all warmed up. As this is uh, with no speakers connected, uh, on auxiliary, volume to zero, tone control is flat, 5.1. So it's a, it's a little bit lower than the other channel, well within uh, what we uh, can tolerate really for uh, still getting a decent sound and not causing too much problems. So we're happy enough with that amplifier. Um, yeah, uh, a job well done there really, and uh, this goes for the uh, A10. They're all pretty much similar kind of circuits, I think, the A20 and A30, all got the same kind of service manual and test points and uh, you know, what readings to get and uh, what to set the bias to. So um, that's for this amplifier anyway, the A10 I've got in front of me. So I'll say until the next video, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.